or on its own accord. The Bible says that when they were past the first and second guard posts, as Peter was being led up by the angel, the third iron gate, the third gate which was an iron gate, opened on its own accord. And therefore it is important we ask ourselves this afternoon, who is the man and who is the woman who the iron gate opens for in its own or on its own accord? Many of us may think there was not much labor in the life of Peter for the iron gate to open. But I want us to do a real exposition of Acts chapter number 12. I'm not going to read it as an entire blog. I'm going to do an exposition as I give us the requirement number one of the man or the woman who the iron gate must open for on its own accord i see gates open but we must master the requirements for the gate to open and the requirement number one that we will dwell on is that the man who the iron gate is going to open for on its own accord must be a man or a woman of prayer the bible says in verse Number five of Acts chapter number 12, that Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. The church offered constant prayer to the imprisoned Peter and the gates opened up for this man. Allow me to declare this morning, that as you give your life to prayer, as you give your life to intercession, may the third iron gate open entirely for you and for me in Jesus' mighty name. And I want to begin, number one, by saying that prayer and intercession opens a world of possibilities for God's children. Prayer and intercession opens a world of possibilities for God's children. And I want you to run with me quickly because this, we are going to do it uh, quickly but also achieve the agenda. Again, I repeat, Acts chapter 12 and verse number 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church and i'm saying to us this morning number one that prayer and intercession opens a world of uh, possibilities for god's people every time that all of us are praying to god for an intervention and we end up not in prayer we end up disregarding prayer we lock the world of possibilities because you are healing, it is in that possibility. You are open door, you are next level, your inheritance, it is in that possibility. And therefore, constant prayer was offered for Peter by the church. And because of that, there was an open gate for Peter. Some of us are praying for 10 minutes only. And we are expecting the iron gate to open. Some of us are praying for only three minutes and we are expecting the world of possibilities to open up for us. But allow me to submit to us. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God by the church. And I want you to mark constant prayer. It is not praying on a Monday and not praying on a Tuesday. It is praying throughout. It is not fasting in January. And again, you fast again next January. That is very important of us this precious morning or afternoon. Number two, allow me to share with us 
that prayer is a weapon that deals with demonic harassment and negative will of men. Yes, prayer is a weapon that deals with demonic harassment and negative will of men. And I'm getting that from verse number one and verse number two. It deals, verse two, verse one, two, and three. It deals with that harassment and the negative will of men. It is important to know that if the negative will of men is going to be defeated. You see what we have prayed for? You see, about that time, Herod stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Look at that word. We said it's a journey of Acts 12. To harass some from the church. Prayer is a weapon that deals with demonic harassment and the negative will of men. Go to the next one. Then he killed uh, James, the brother of John, with a sword. And the verse 3, can you see the negative will of men? And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. He saw it pleased the Jews. There are some people that enjoy when you are sacked from job. We tell them their days of rejoicing are over. Can I hear the church say amen? There are some people who rejoice when your next relationship towards marriage gets broken. We are telling them the days of rejoicing, they are over because prayer deals with demonic harassment and negative will of man. Can somebody say amen? Allow me to prophesy as I lift up my right hand and declare, you shall not die as they wish. You will not perish according to their bad will in Jesus' name. Because you love prayer, their negative will is going to be defeated. Now, I want to ask us a question. That is why I'm not hurrying it up this afternoon. What would have happened if Peter was not prayed for by the church? If there was no constant prayer? If there was no constant intercession, if the church was not saying, Oh God, we pray today, let Peter be free. Oh God, let Herod's power be broken in Jesus' name. We sign Peter out of prison. The church that was gathered in the house of Mary, it had many who were gathered praying for Peter. And let me tell you, saints of God, prayer is the weapon that deals with demonic harassment and also the negative will of men. I pray today, if you are battling the negative will of men, I command it to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall prosper, even though they have been saying you will never prosper. And that is why we must pray. There are some people who come to the counseling room and immediately they give you their story. And then you map out their prayer life. You feel some worry for them. Because you are certain, unless they pray, that prison gate may not open as quickly as they want. And some of them you tell them, and I've told you before, if you have time, why don't you pass through the church and pray for 30 minutes? But you see, after passing through the church, Five minutes, they exit and go. But let me tell you, there is negative will from your relatives, from your neighbors, from your employees, from everybody else. And uh, we see that, that Herod decided to harass the church. And when he saw it pleased the Jews, he went after Peter. I pray today, May there be resurrection of prayer in Jesus' mighty name. It doesn't have to be a Kesha. You can come here and pour your heart unto the Lord. Let's move on. And I want to submit this also to the online church. That prayer is the grace that deals with the prison and the demonic guards. 
that have been sent to guard you. Prayer is the grace that deals with the prison. Peter was therefore kept in prison and he was given soldiers to guard him. The first guard post, the second one and the third one. But allow me to submit that prayer is the grace. Can somebody say the grace? That deals with both the prison doors and the guards that have been commissioned to guard your sentence. I want to declare in the name of the Lord, the guards that have been commissioned to guard your sentence, we fire them right now in Jesus' name. Oh, here I require a fiery amen. Could be you will say a better amen if we read verse 4 of Acts chapter 12. Let's first of all go there. The Bible says in verse 4 that so when he arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after the Passover. You see, the prison, and I have several of them, the prison of missed opportunities may the guards that are guarding that prison disappear in Jesus name the guards that are guarding the poverty and the lack cycle that you have been going through may they be defeated in Jesus name the guards that have been guarding generational curses may they lose power in Jesus mighty name the guards that have been guarding disease and infirmity, may they be defeated by the altar of prayer. Look at your neighbor and ask them, how many minutes do you pray a day? Or do you just wake up in the morning, jump to the shower, off to job, off to business, off to your career, until trouble knocks the door? That is when you say, oh, 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 oh I need to be prayed for. By a man of God, I want to remind you in verse 12, there was a church that was praying for Peter. It was in the house of, of uh, Mary, the mother of John Mark. And they were praying. They were calling on God. And they were devoted. Give us verse 12. They were devoted. They came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was named Mark, where many were gathered together praying not one not two not three not four not five may the entire of tattoo chapel receive a revival in jesus name revival unto prayer revival unto intercession because prayer is the grace that will deal with both the prison and the guards that have been sent to guard your prison. Let me tell you, some of you are not just bound. Some are bound, and there is a guard, there is a demonic guard that is saying, who you? They will never buy a car. This one, they will never be married. This one, they will never own a home. This one, they will never be healed of asthma. In the name of Jesus, may the God spirits be defeated in Jesus name and prayer is a weapon that drives them away even that girl who is being prayed for there at the back may the God spirit that is guarding her captivity the Islamic powers be defeated in Jesus mighty name we announce her freedom and her deliverance in the name of Jesus although Peter was in prison and there were guards because of prayer the guards could not even know that the angel was present can somebody say amen like I told you on Wednesday I listened to some sisters who were praying here and they were praying praying when you think they are done after a few minutes it is like a breather you know they pick up again they pick up again they pick up again and let me tell you saints of God whether we go for deliverance whether we buy water whether we buy oil wherever you want to go the truth is without prayer there is no freedom 
in the life of Peter. So prayer is the grace. And let me tell you, it's a grace. You cannot touch it like this fan. It is a grace that manifests itself. And everybody can tell, brother so and so has encountered a supernatural grace. I want to say number four, that, that if prayer is a priority, if prayer is a priority, being bound by two chains, between two soldiers is not an issue. If prayer is a priority, being bound by two chains between two guards is not an issue at all. Verse 5 and 6, the Bible tells us that Peter was placed, bound by two chains. Peter therefore was kept in prison and as he was kept, there was prayer. If you go to 6, 7 there, you realize that there was that kind of a tying of his hands. And there were soldiers. There were strong soldiers. I am a firm witness that cancer can be healed in Jesus' name. Can I hear the church say amen? Blood pressure can be healed in Jesus' name. Asthma can disappear in the name of the Lord. Ulcers can disappear in Jesus' name. Dead can be broken in Jesus' name. See, the other day, as we were talking, there was a teenager who was trying to reach out to me for help. And the help was, you know, parents, you need to be careful. When your son or your daughter is reaching out to, for help, then you need to know they are reaching out for help. So, uh -huh, what is that? That you're feeling like that? Like that? The next thing I had was a fight in that room. And I listened to a little bit of it. The next thing, it was a suicidal case. And, and I stood up and said, this girl shall not die in Jesus' mighty name. And let me tell you, every time we go back to prayer, and we go back to calling upon him, then chains are broken. That girl is well in Jesus' name. And I want to say this in the name of the Lord. There is nothing that cannot be dealt with if only prayer became a priority. Remember how the point is beginning. If prayer is a pro priority, being bound by two chains between two soldiers is not an issue. Because a man knows how to pray. The woman knows how to pray. He knows how to fast. He can fast for three days, seven days, 21 days. And they're telling God, I am not living here until the chains are broken. And until the guards have been signed off. And I pray in Jesus' name that we shall love prayer with the whole of our heart. I have taught prayer all over in the body of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, it is not that Peter had a good bank account. No, constant prayer was offered for him by the church. The big question is, how many have died and they should have lived if you prayed? How many lost a job and they should have gotten the job if you prayed? How many lost a visa? Uh, opportunity for a visa and if you would have prayed they would have gotten it I believe the case on Friday would have not been a possibility if prayer was not raised on the altar and therefore if prayer is a priority brethren being bound by two chains between two soldiers is not an issue let's advance a little bit further five Prayer releases the ministry of angels. I pray that angels will minister to your business in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 and 8. The Bible says, Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him. Look at that. An angel of the Lord stood by him. And a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side. Raised him up saying, arise quickly. And his chains fell off. 
Let me tell you, angels are real. A brother here testified of even how a wheel got out of the vehicle. It is not you who were able to control the vehicle. I believe there was a ministry of angels. May angels minister protection to you in Jesus' name. May they stop the witches in the name of the Lord. May they stop the sorcerers in the mighty name of Jesus. One time coming from a mission in Western Kenya, those days we had Eldoret Express, a very popular bus. It was not one or two, there were many. I know today there is one or two. And arriving at a place near Zabezi, the vehicle lost direction after the front wheel burst. And the driver was struggling right, left, this way, this way. And then all of a sudden, it went and grided on the wall that separates the roads. And everybody was saying, driver, congratulations. You have done a great job. I told them, as you were wiping up the dust, it is not the driver. It is called the ministry of angels. May angels stop the hand of the enemy. May there be divine provision, divine protection, supernatural connections. May angels receive you in the airport. I have had testimonies of men of God who are escorted in the airport by an angel. May angels minister to us. The next few minutes, let's go on. Let's see whether we go up to nine. Six. Prayer will make the iron gate that is holding your miracle to open on its own. Prayer will make the iron gate that is holding your miracle to open on its own. Verse 10 and 11, it tells us as they prayed, when they were past the past and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened for them. May the third iron gate open because we are praying. Oh, may somebody receive a new job because you called upon his name. May there be a promotion because you are calling upon his name. May there be a confirmation that is based on prayer. I've given you a testimony of my own dad. He should be six feet under now. Buried, forgotten, a banana planted on top of the grave and several seasons harvested. But because they are people, we used to call ourselves the travelers. And you see, we were not even praying Monday to Friday. Yes, there is that prayer. Yes, Lord, remember it. But Fridays, we were praying and fasting and saying this cancer must disappear in Jesus' mighty name. We were there before God declaring, he shall not die. The same way I'm declaring today, you shall not die, but live to declare the oracles of God. But the more we prayed, the more the report was negative. The more we called upon the Lord, the more he dropped in weight from 80 kgs to 45 kgs. No hair on him. And he was crying and saying, my children, my children. He was referring to the last bones, the triplets. And God said in that prayer meeting, your father is healed. And go and anoint him. I went and carried anointing oil. And I found a man is still on his sofa crying. It looks like his last days. And my late grandfather, I met him. Those days there were not even personal vehicles. You are walking Route 11, hurrying up down the river, up another one to go and anoint him. Somewhere I met my late grandfather and he told me, come, come, come. We went sideways. He said, okay, you have come. The way I have seen your father, he's not living for long. Therefore, it is good you have come. Go and say hello to him. And I told him, the Lord said, the man shall be healed. And he said, well, and I went and anointed him. And today, I told you the other day, he is celebrating 16 years since the Lord healed him of cancer. Let me tell you something. The man who said he cannot live long 
We buried him even before my own father. He's still alive. He is doing well. He is still serving the Lord. The same to Paul's dad. He was so sick. I remember praying on phone and praying over him. And today he tells me that his father tells everybody, if you want prayer, talk to my son. He will pray for you and you will be delivered. Let me tell you, saints of God, prayer is not theory. It is practical. And those who pray, they experience supernatural power. I declare today, may the third iron gate open up for each one of you in Jesus' mighty name. Can somebody say amen? Today when I look at this man, I see the glory of God. I see the power of God. Even I had to change the prayer last year. Because that time I was telling God, Lord, let him reach this age that you normally talk about. Seventy. For a reason of strength, 80. Now he's one year to 70. They changed the prayer the other day and said, no, 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 not 70. 120 in the name of Jesus Christ. When we pray, the iron gate opens up. Can somebody say amen? But you see, when we begin crying in soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, and we are all there, the daddy is crying, the mother is crying, the firstborn is crying, you don't know what to do. Somebody must form a prayer altar and lift up that need to God. Lift up that job to God. Lift up that tender, that mission to God in Jesus' mighty name. Can somebody say amen? May the third iron gate open in jesus name and you know all of you from my wife all the way to susan here all the way to me the iron gate is different from each other and it could be a job and it could be healing a connection a confirmation somebody troubling you somewhere may that gate open as you pray can somebody say amen, amen. these brethren are a witness I took them to a mission where they say the third day the preacher gets sick or the equipments don't work and they all go back home. But what happened? I went to Cataloni. I prayed until one day I heard the sound of a mighty rain coming. Then went back to Nairobi, took a shower. The following day we left. We went all the way. We preached. The first day, I told them, now that you know the place, the iron gate must open. I will not go for door to door. Uh, you will not see me. Give me a thermos of fermented uji and hot water in my room. I want to pray for seven hours before I preach in the crusade. And I was praying seven hours. My role was to come check who is not behaving well in the mission. That time I was not a pastor. I, was, I used to give them fair immediately. Go back to Nairobi. And so the first day I preached. I still see the late Andrew Ototo, Reverend, uh, interpreting. The second day, the third day, the fourth day, a woman spinned from the back of the crowd. This way, this way, came and fell on the altar and began saying she's tired of witchcraft. I didn't know I had to ask the interpreter what she's saying. Oh, you are tired of witchcraft. Where is the witchcraft? And she said, it is in my house. I've even sold my firstborn. How many children? To witchcraft. I told her, go and get it. And we burn it. And they went home. They came with a sack of witchcraft items. I began removing them one by one, and they were running away. The first one was uh, Gozi Angombe, you know, a very long one, dark, old, smelly one. And she said, this one I wear at night when I'm bewitching people. These ones, I do this. Another one, another wire. This one I put on the neck, and I say a few words, and the victim commits suicide. This one, I do this, and the other. And a crusade that ends on Wednesday, and the equipments go bad, and the preachers get sick. It ended on Sunday with a thousand, listen a little bit, with a thousand and five hundred giving their lives to Jesus. 
So the iron gate opens when we pray. Can somebody say amen? It opens on its own accord. And we discipled that woman, baptized her, and she was a disciple. May the iron gate open in Jesus' mighty name. You see, we keep telling believers, please pray. Please come to the prayer meeting. When they come, they stay in one corner. They look at everybody. They look at everybody. You can see somebody who doesn't have interest in prayer. After a period of time, they take the shuria bag. I hear them called that way. They put them there. They are gone. They are by the gate. And the devil claps and says, she has taken the shuria bag and disappeared. That is how the gate remains closed. The other brother will just look a little bit there and doesn't have the interest and the burden for prayer. No wonder I told the intercessors in Tatu Chapel, the idea of pressure so that you can pray. No, no, no. We are going to pray voluntary and with a lot of maturity. Can somebody say amen? Let somebody declare the goodness of God will be seen. A job will be seen. An opening will be manifested. A tender will come forth. Let the glory come. Because prayer will make the iron gate holding your miracle to open. Somebody say amen. You have not prayed. Until your neighbors wonder. You know, this brother is praying so, so much. Until you tell them, I have a revelation of prayer. I have a revelation on what is to call upon God. I am inviting us to close the bedroom door and call upon him and tell God, I refuse to die poor. I refuse to be a beggar. I refuse to remain single all the days of my life. I refuse to be a tenant all the days of my life. And, and you book yourself to the next level of placement in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? amen. The first time I saw a brother pray until this vein popped out, I wondered what is the trouble. I wondered what is the issue. But I knew he had a revelation of prayer that I didn't know. And let me tell you, saints, it is a high time we get back on our knees for prayer. Can somebody say amen? amen? So that as they testify, you also testify. So that as they testify, you also say, I am next online in Jesus' mighty name. Prayer opens the iron gate. Wow. Number seven, if I'm not wrong. Is it seven? And then we close with eight. Seven. When we pray, we leave to see the opportunity of knocking the door to our miracles. When we pray, we shall leave to see the opportunity of knocking the door to our miracles. Verse 12. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose son name was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. 13. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, let me tell you, very few people live to knock the door of the gate to their answered prayer. I declare as you pray, you will leave to see the goodness of God in your life. You will knock the door to your job, to your miracle, to your promotion, and to your next level in Jesus' mighty name. And then last but not least, when we pray, God will book us to a place of testimony. God is going to book us into a place of testimony. Peter testified in verse 17. And said to them that were praying in the house. Look at the scripture. 
I pray it will become a reality. Please, please, even if you have not finished writing, look at this, motioning to them with his hand to keep silent. He declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, go and tell these things to James and to the brethren. And he went and departed to another place. Now, a time is going to come. You will motion people and tell them, can you listen to me? I have a testimony. I am now driving. I have a testimony. I now have a visa. I have a testimony. I now have a job. I have a testimony. Now I have a business. I have a testimony. Now I am not renting. I have a testimony. Now I am engaged. He motioned them. May you live to see the day of you motioning the people and beyond. Can somebody say amen? I see Tatu Chapel motioning and saying the Lord has done it. If you're not there, I have so many things I'm telling the Lord. Do it, do it, do it. And I will motion you and tell you, brethren, the Lord has done it for my life. And please let me add this one as the last one. Prayer releases the final judgment upon those who are troubling our destinies those of us joining us online we are so grateful that you can follow us on this message about prayer as a means to which the gate is going to open prayer releases the final judgment and this is going to be eight verse 20 21 yes it is going to do it okay the final judgment upon our enemies is going to come now herod had been very angry with the people of tyre look at this story look at this story it's the same chapter and sidon they came to him with one accord and having made blasters the king passed no aid their friend they asked for peace because their country was supplied by the king's country we are almost there don't lose it let's go so on the said day the same herod who is trying to kill peter arrayed in royal apparel sat on his throne and gave an oration to the people he began to talk to them and the people kept shouting that herod is the voice of a god and not of a man imagine then immediately the same angel struck him because he did not give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. We know worms come later after death. When the body is decomposing, this one was compounded. Death, decay, worms and all that in a single instance in a meeting may those who are troubling our destinies see the glory of God in Jesus name oh can I hear you say amen, amen. may the Lord protect and preserve you because he's a faithful God and, and um, for those who write quickly I can even add the one last one verse 24 prayer makes the word of God to grow and to multiply but the word of the Lord grew and multiplied so in other words church we are simply saying let the women be praying let the men begin praying let the youth begin praying let the teenagers begin prayer let the entire church begin praying because as we pray the iron gate is going to open. Can I hear us say amen? amen? My visas were as a result of prayer, she can tell you. And um, when I knew prayer must go to another level, I raised it and they came one by one. It is because of prayer. It is because of prayer. And as I wrap up three things, you can say, I was not raised in a church that loves prayer. What do I do? Because I'm learning Tattoo Chapel as it is a new church. We have those who have been raised.
by a church that loves prayer and those that used to be prayed for and it is enough i want to tell you that what you need to do is to associate with the prayerful as you associate then you are also going to pray can somebody say amen there are those who say that when i start praying i lose the concentration i can't pray further i want to tell you the answer to that is pushing your body pushing your soul pushing your spirit from the outer court the tabernacle of moses to the holy place all the way to the holy of holies no prayer is simple when you're starting i can tell you on friday when i'm praying when i come here first one hour you feel like you're beating through some forest but as before the one hour comes forth you feel the ignition has taken place the grace has taken over let me tell you you cannot depend on the prayers of brethren and they are very good to tell you but they never never utter a word to god in prayer the bible says is anyone among you suffering let him pray not ask for prayer let him pray praise the lord is any one of you in need of a miracle let them do what i want to hear you let them do what is anyone in need for an open door let them do what is anyone in need of a capital for business let them do what pray is anyone in need of healing let them do what pray no wonder when i'm late for appointments you can be late as a human being and when you arrive now the several clients have arrived on tuesday and thursday and you can see them they are wondering when are we going to see the man of god when are we going to see the man of god i tell simon tell them to begin praying because no matter the case solution number one will be prayer can somebody say amen as i release us the ladies for lunch and the men to go home may the grace of prayer rest upon us in jesus name hey can i hear a better amen may the spirit of prayerlessness be defeated in the name of jesus may the altar of lethargy and lukewarmness be broken may the spirit of jezebel lose its power over your prayer life in the mighty name of jesus prayer in the night prayer in the morning prayer in the evening can somebody say amen how many of you can testify and say your best days are the days you ascended to the mountain to pray how many of you can say your best days those of you here in the same college my best days was the hockey field when i could go down there and call upon the name of the lord my best days ever is not when i'm counseling people it is when i'm praying my best days ever is when you go to the prayer mountain and i think we need to go back there because that is where the glory of god prevails oh i'm feeling unable to end this message but it is ending this is how my ministry was born and i have two witnesses here when i knew very well god has called me to ministry i went to aboretum park for prayer for how many months six months i said now that i'm not in engineering and i don't have enough fare i will drop at westlands from kangemi and i'm going to walk all the way past backlands baptist down the river all the way up down to aboretum and I had identified a tree under which I was praying on. Six months, and I was there on time. 8 a.m., like somebody who is on job. And I was leaving at 5 p.m., the way the guys in job leave. Six good months. 
So the miracles I see today, I think some of them are back into that banking. They can be traced back into that. And they can tell you it was not just Monday to Saturday because Sunday is where we were gathering for prayer for Sunday service, kneeling down on the map of the world and saying, Lord, give us nations. I prayed under that tree until you know, walking. See the way we pray? And those who are religious say, Nini how anasema. You know, that kind of a thing. That, and I looked at the dry path, that kabarabara one day, and I say, this is where my miracles, signs, and wonders have come from. I am telling you, my sister, you have watched a lot of Nigerian movies. Arise and pray. Until your head is just playing movies. It's time to pray. Can somebody say amen? It's time to pray, and we have three days, 25th, 26th, 27th, of gathering back for prayer. Somebody lift up your two hands and say, Lord, this one you can do it standing, please. I want us to close with a powerful declaration in the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I want us to lift up our hands up high and say, Lord, baptize me today with the spirit of prayer I refuse to be held back by my timetable by my schedules of the day I declare today I will lose my life to create a time to pray baptize me with the spirit of prayer and somebody say amen. amen for the interest of time uh, I want to pray for us but I would want to um, point out a few people and say um, our sister faith lift up your hands there is something great happening make sure you you drive the key to the prayer door inside completely there, there are the other Maggie there um, not Maggie Miriam Simon over there. Lift up your hand. This sister here. Sorry, I'm mistaking you for Miriam. The one behind the small boy. Yeah. Yes. Something good is happening in your life. And don't be lost in the world of who can help me and who cannot help me. Drive deeper into prayer. Sister Annie, can get my Ruth. Lift up your hands, Ruth, um, from Pika. The Lord is uh, doing something unique. And I, I'm not saying to the rest he's not doing something. But there is something, a deeper operation. And he's telling you, drive deeper into prayer. Get deeper into prayer. The same to faith. Your ministry is touching a new level. And it cannot go by rehearsal only. And it cannot hit that level. And this goes to the whole fire brother. It is not by good oratory. It's not by good flow. There has got to be a deeper measure of prayer. Go deeper. There is going to be a greater healing in the name of Jesus. This sister who is behind our brother Peter, one of the, uh, the one spectacles there, lift up your hand. The same thing to you. Your career door is wide open, but there is a veil before it. May the Lord help you as you pray to go through that into an immeasurable breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Strategic help us. Lift up your right hand. Don't just say you are helping. The Lord is also charging you. Pray more, pray more, pray more. Invest more. Don't worry about preaching. If you pray and intercede, you have supported the vision in a greater measure in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to lift up our hands up high. And I want you to affirm this prayer with a yes and amen. And uh, I want you to wait for it. As you just speak in tongues, don't just be quiet. Uh, take a few seconds. Just wait uh, for this prayer as you marble a few words. Uh, yeah, God before God in tongues. Oh, uh, repo shiva baba bosande. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, gracious Redeemer. 
thank you for the grace of prayer. Thank you, mighty God. Oh, Rapa Pasanda, Rapo Shirababo Sanda, Judy, music is waiting, recording, favors with studios, favor with producers. It is happening, it is happening by the power of the anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lift up your hands up high. Please don't lift in a religious way. Lift up in the manner of receiving. Our God and our gracious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Lord, I thank you for the grace of prayer. Let it rest upon each one of us in the service in Jesus' mighty name. I declare right now the powers of Jezebel, the powers of witchcraft, the powers of Antichrist that hinder prayer. They will not stop your children. They will not stop your children. I declare miracles will be gotten by prayer. Interventions will come through prayer. Open doors will come through prayer. And Father, may your glory rest upon your people as they pray. Just wave those hands before him in the manner of connecting with him. Lord, even as the online church is joining us, let your grace rest upon each one of them. And may the ministry of prayer rest upon each one of us in a special way. Deliver the bound, heal the sick, and set the captives free. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the entire church says, Amen. As many as have received it, say, Amen. Another Amen. amen. And Amen. Thank you, online church. Even as you give through that number on the screen. The rest of us, let's.